Hi guys. Uh, so, on our previous uh, sessions, uh, we have learned HTML and the CSS. So, in CSS, there are so many properties are there. So, it's it's not possible uh, for anyone to cover everything during the training sessions. Uh, but I covered the most important ones and the mostly used ones. I'll cover a few more CSS things when I'll talk about CSS three. Uh, there are a few minor, uh, smaller things are there uh, in CSS also. So for those, uh, I'll encourage you guys to go to the Mozilla Developer Network website. So you can search like CSS MDN. She will give you a link of Mozilla. So Mozilla Developer Network, uh, where they maintain all the CSS standards and everything, and it's a very good documentation. Uh, you want to understand more on the CSS, what all properties are, because you can't keep on reading the things. Because as as when you develop something, you need something, then you'll come and search whether that's possible in CSS or not. If it's possible, how could we? That's how the develop, development works. So uh, I've talked about most of the things like the box model, which is very uh, uh, critical thing. Then I talked about how you can position your uh, CSS uh, elements. And then we saw how we can create a layout, right? We created a, a two column layout. Uh, so using that, you can create as many uh, column layouts. The very uh, uh, fundamental things of CSS which uh, each web developer should be aware of. But there are so many other things also uh, to style your page. You can go to the documentation, you can go through this. So if anywhere you guys are uh, facing any problem uh, by understanding a particular CSS properties, uh, you can always come back to me, I can explain on that. So <coughs> So today what I'm uh, going up oh, and nowadays uh, when we develop a web application, uh, a lot of people use other libraries, the libraries like Bootstrap or if some, for mobile application, even uh, developers use Ionic. So those Bootstrap itself provides so many classes that you don't have to uh, write so many properties to achieve a few of the styles in HTML. So the bootstrap handles automatically a lot of things. So, and we are having a session on bootstrap and we'll learn a few more on this, how you can style your page. Okay, so, and if you want obviously more, you can come over here, uh, the, the developer, uh, Mozilla developer network CSS section and you can read, uh, uh, the particular CSS properties, what are available and what their values are. But most we have covered uh, in last two sessions. Okay, so now uh, I'll talk about a JavaScript uh, today. So the basic JavaScript I'll run through very fast uh, uh, because I'll assume uh, you'll grab it easily. Uh, but where the advanced JavaScript I'll talk, I'll, I'll, I'll go a bit soon. Okay. So uh, today I'll cover a very a basic one. So, uh, so the first, uh, if we learn JavaScript, then the first question. So JavaScript uh, is a very integral component or very critical component of web application development. Uh, so if someone asks what's JavaScript, right? So so the name Java is there, uh, which sometimes confuse the developers who are very new to the programming world. Uh, so, and the script world. So both are very confusing. So, so the JavaScript name itself is very confusing. Nothing to do with Java, although the that keyword is same. So why the name JavaScript has come up? So when the JavaScript has been created at that time, uh, Java was uh, a bit popular language, uh, so to just gain the popularity from that name, uh, the creator of uh, JavaScript has given the name as JavaScript. 
and although this is a javascript but it's not a scripting language javascript is not a scripting language it's a full fledged programming language you can do everything what you can do with other traditional programming language everything is possible in javascript also but yeah the name is a bit confusing so uh, it's been uh, developed uh, way back in 1995 uh, and and it's primarily a client side language uh, i see sravya is offline uh, is there any network issue uh, or the lip any idea or are you guys able to hear me uh, properly okay so we'll wait for sevya to uh, join in Okay, looks like Sevilla is in now. Okay, so I was talking about uh, JavaScript is primarily a client side language uh, because uh, most of the programming done in JavaScript for client side only. That's for web application, but that's uh, no more uh, true because nowadays with Node uh, we can do the server side programming as well with JavaScript. Uh, but yeah, when it was developed. Uh, no one has thought of uh, programming the server side uh, functionality using JavaScript, but which is possible now using Node.js. So, what uh, can be done with JavaScript? The next thing, uh, so any website, whatever you are seeing, anything uh, can be done with JavaScript or any web applications because any application which runs on the browser as well as the mobile applications. If it's a hybrid, and I have uh, this talked about before uh, in my previous session of what is hybrid application. So, hybrid application for mobile devices also use JavaScript games. So, uh, any games, uh, be it a 2D game, 3D game, uh, mobile games, uh, can be done using JavaScript. And JavaScript programming can be used in robots as well, uh, variable technologies like the smartwatch. The setup box, the TV, uh, the all the Internet of Things, where we uh, connect to network and do some operation, everything uh, can be programmed in JavaScript. So YouTube application also. So in YouTube, uh, there is a application called PlayStation is there, which also has been built using Angular JS, which is nothing but JavaScript. So the parallel effects can be done using JavaScript. So What's a parallel effects means uh, all the kind of animation. Uh, any web page where you see a lot of animations are happening. Uh, so those like a kind of a 3D animations uh, where you see the object is moving or rotating. And let's say you can say a solar system. So if you have to build a solar system using 3D uh, on a website where you can show how the sun and the other uh, planets are rotating, so that's that that kind of things when you do uh, using all those 3D and 4D effects that we call parallax effects. So those also can be uh, programmed using uh, JavaScript. So uh, we learned HTML, we learned CSS, uh, then where JavaScript fits because when you develop a web application, you need uh, these three uh, technologies: one is HTML, the CSS, and JavaScript. 
So JavaScript adds the interaction to the application or the page. Without JavaScript, your uh, website or web application will be static uh, because you can't interact. You can't interact with your the application without JavaScript uh, because HTML can only provide you a structure how your page will structure. And the CSS provides them the styling, uh, whether it will look blue or bold or point small. Those everything happens in CSS. HTML gives a load layout like where the button will be, where your paragraph will be, uh, where your table will be. So those comes from HTML. Then when you click on those or when you scroll, uh, when you hover, a lot of things happen. Like when you click, it navigates to other page. When you click on the input box, it asks for to provide you input. Uh, then that input must be captured. So those are everything, whatever the interaction we do uh, day to day on uh, web applications, uh, that is possible because of JavaScript. So that's uh, majorly what uh, can be done with JavaScript. So uh, first JavaScript application. So to write your first JavaScript application, what you need, uh, we need a browser and we need an editor, the code editor. Right, and JavaScript, we can set it up with HTML and CSS. And JavaScript files will have extension a .js file. .js file can be included in a .html file using script tag. So that will uh, quickly see. You can write your JavaScript inline also. I mean, in .html file, also you can write your JavaScript directly. Uh, but that's not a best practice because it's not scalable because when you're working on a actual applic project or a bigger application, if you're putting your JavaScript, CSS, HTML, everything on a single page, then it's not uh, scalable. Uh, and if multiple people are working on the same uh, file, then then it's 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 quite unmanageable. So that's why it's not best practice to have your uh, JavaScript code inside your uh, HTML file. So the best practice is always use a different JS file uh, and the, the best practice is to put at the end of the body tag. Uh, so what will happen, uh, I'll, I'll explain you that, what's the benefit of that. So, uh, so before that we'll see first how we uh, what you can say, integrate the JavaScript file with HTML file. So I'll go to uh, Plunker as usual and I just launch the editor. You can see uh, the line number six. Okay, so this uh, line number six is how we uh, integrate the JavaScript file with HTML. Okay. So this is my JavaScript file. So it's on the same uh, folder, basically at the same location where my HTML is. That's why I'm just giving script.js file. If it will be in some other folder or somewhere, then you can give a path like like this lib slash. Let's say it will be inside a lib folder, and it will say lib slash script .js. Okay, Cool. So this is how you can write your JavaScript as well. You can write your JavaScript like this also. So I can directly have a script like this, and here only console dot log. So this is JavaScript console dot log. What I'm writing here. I'll write hello world. So this also possible. You can uh, remove this line. You can directly write every, all your JavaScript here. I can write a function. Everything. It will work the same way how it will work if I would have line number six. But this is not a recommended way of doing it. But technically, yeah, it works. Okay, so it's not necessarily your script tag has to be in head. Your script tag can be here as well. 
you can try to skip tag here also nothing harm with that okay with this my setup is done this is how you can link your CSS file liner file this is how you can use your uh, you can include your JavaScript file so there is a HTML element called script script close opening script closer and then there is a src attribute is there where I provide the path of the JavaScript file. Cool. Okay, and I was talking the best practice is to put your JavaScript file at the end of your body tag. It makes application load faster and our HTML won't stop rendering in case of error in JavaScript file. Okay, so what happens, how this browser works. So before that, we have to understand how browser works. So browser reads everything in HTML from top to bottom. So while rendering HTML, it can load JavaScript file. Okay, so when it starts reading from here, it first uh, encounter line number five. Then it sees, okay, there is a file called child.css which I have to download. Then it goes to the server, it asks for style.css file, the server gives it a style.css file, it downloads it. And these things happen very fast. And then it reads, okay, I have to download uh, the script.js file. So, so this actually blocking my browser to uh, render this h1, which is their hello plunker. Because to render hello plunker, I don't need JavaScript, right? So, so that's why the best practice is you put your JavaScript, this guy over here. Okay. So, and so what will happen because of this? Uh, so it will read line by line and So you can put it just before your body tag. Okay, so what you do, it will first render first. Uh, okay, so the CSS, I need CSS big at the beginning because uh, the CSS might have some classes which I might be using here. Let's say I'm having some class called hello, right? So to understand this hello, this hello must be will be there inside this CSS file, right? So to understand what this hello is, I should download this style CSS file. Otherwise, I will not be understanding what this hello is. So that's why the CSS file has to be downloaded first. Any font file is there has to be downloaded first. Any image which has to be rendered to be downloaded first. But JavaScript, which might not require the top, because JavaScript is only will come into picture when I'll do some interaction, or maybe uh, so. So because of because once it loads, then only a user can do an interaction. So that's why what I can do, I can put my JavaScript file at the end of all the HTML elements, so it will can a browser can read those HTML, it can re render those HTML based on CSS style, it can paint them and then it will come to the line number 11 and see okay it has to download some JavaScript file as well and it will download. So during the download it will not block the rendering. If you put it at the top because it will have to process that request to the server to get it downloaded, you will see us it's blocking the view of loading. Although the browser does this operation so fast, if you are working on a very small application, small JavaScript file, then obviously you will not see those lagging because this downloading happens in maybe 200 millisecond, 300 millisecond, 100 millisecond based on your uh, file size. You might not see any lag, but if you're working on a bigger application, uh, then you might see that lag when you put a lot of JavaScript to be downloaded uh, even before uh, uh, rendering your HTML. Okay, so that's a few of the best practices what we should follow. <coughs> so JavaScript statements are separated by semicolon. 
like uh, this is our JavaScript file, right? So I can come over here and I'll just write console.log and I'll say my first JS app and it should end with semicolon. And when I run this, inspect this, this console.log just prints a message in console. You can see a message has come up over here my first JSF script is one. This has come up because of this line number one and which I have integrated in line number 11 in HTML5. Okay. So console.log, what it does, it just logs some message to your console window. That's all. So you can see here this message is there. Okay, that's good. Okay. Uh, what next? Uh, okay, we can uh, JavaScript statements are separated by semicolons. When separated by sorry, semicolon, multiple statements on one line are allowed. JavaScript ignores multiple spaces. You can add white space to your script to make it more readable. So those are uh, maybe uh, who are new time developer they. Uh, Sometimes confused, so with the things, so I can have this many space, and here I can write my second statement. Hello, JS. So it's it's pretty much allowed in JavaScript. You can have this many spaces. It will not harm anything. Or if it's a semicolon, say separated. You can have write on the same line also. This is also allowed in JavaScript. Okay. So this one line we call as a statement in JavaScript. So JavaScript statements are composed of uh, values, operators, expressions, keywords, comments. All these can be in JavaScript statements. Uh, currently, whatever we have done, it's an uh, expression, whatever using, we have not used any operators. Operators like uh, plus, minus, those are operators equal. Keywords are like uh, a reserve word in JavaScript. We'll see what are the keywords are available, but your statement composed of either some values or some operators or some expression or some keyword or some comment or mix of all. Okay, so JavaScript keywords are used to identify the action, what I want to do, and uh, to comment the code in JavaScript. Uh, what we do, uh, we just, either you can put this double slash, or you can do like this also. Oops, sorry. Oh, man. Like this also you can do. So both way you can do. You can either put a double slash or you can put slash star then star slash. So this is how we uh, comment a JavaScript. And uh, the JavaScript identifiers and keywords are case sensitive. So in JavaScript uh, to define a variable uh, we just use a keyword called var var a so a is a variable so this is a case sensitive so this var will not work if I say capital var it is not recognizing this it has to be small var because it's a case sensitive and var is a keyword to <coughs> declare your variable Okay. One interesting thing is that whatever you can do in .js file that you can do in browser console also. So here also I can write console.log. You can see this I am writing in a browser debugging console. Hello console. You can see hello console got printing. Okay, you might be seeing one more thing undefined. I'll talk about that why undefined is coming later. 
but this is how whatever you can do over there you can do here in console window of browser as well okay so sometimes we use this to quickly check a few of the smaller things which I am not which if a developer is not sure how it works then they can come back to this they can come to this console and they can quickly uh, prototype something uh, even before implementing in their real code. So this way also this console window helps to just uh, prototyping a small JavaScript logic. Okay, so a few more, few common operators. Uh, so there is an operator called plus is there. So in general, plus adds to number, but in JavaScript, uh, one more thing it does, it combines the value into string also. So how that's happened, uh, we'll see. So let's say uh, 1 plus 2. So yeah, it's pretty clear it will return 3. But I can do uh, hello plus world as well. Cool. So it just concatenate two strings. So plus is used either to sum two numbers or it can concatenate. So if I say one plus hello, okay, I'm putting in quotes because these are strings, then it will make it one hello, right? Because one, it doesn't throw any error. Because one is a number, hello is a string and I'm saying to add it. Uh, so JavaScript understand, okay, I have to concatenate it. So it just uh, concatenate it will then make it one hello. So this is how the plus operator works. And there are other operators like minus uh, multiplication division that works the normal uh, arithmetic things. Modulo operator uh, is there which returns the reminder of a division. There is something called minus minus and plus plus is there. So minus minus what it does if you say if I do minus minus one, it will just decrement it by one where a equal to let's say 2 so uh, means okay this is a statement in javascript where var is a keyword a is a variable equal is an operator 2 is a value okay so a is nothing but it's an identifier we call it identifier so identifier is also can case sensitive so if i say var a equal to 2 so 2 will be there in the small a not in the capital a if i type capital a it's saying me reference error it's saying a is not defined, but if I type small a, it's giving me two. Okay, if I do minus minus okay, a minus minus sorry a, then it's just subtract minus one from that. Same way, if I do plus plus a, it just add plus one to this. So that's how your uh, this increment and decrement of the operator works. We call it increment and decrement operator. Okay, so there is something called post increment and pre increment. So these are pre increments. <coughs> if I say a plus plus, you can see still show the value is two, but when I print a, it says three. You got it? So you see the value of a is now three. If I say a plus plus, so what it does, it increments it, but on the next line that will get effect affected it will not be affected on the same line so that's why when i say a plus plus you can still see see the output comes as three but when i try to print a again it says four means actually the value has incremented but it will only take effect after the execution of that line so that's why the three is coming up when that line just get printed on the next line onwards the value of a will be four so that's how this we call post increment and if I say plus plus a, that's called a pre-increment. Okay, so same way the post increment and pre decrement So that's how the uh, the increment decrement operator works. Then there is something called assignment operator. That's called equal. I have done it right. Where a equal to two. So this equal is nothing but assignment operator when I am assigning two to a. So there is one more thing is you can do, you can club two operators. Like I can say a plus equal to two. So what does this mean? To add two to a and I want to store it back to a only. Okay. 
so so this is how it's a combination of two operators a plus equal to 2 means add 2 to a and store it back in a that's how this works i mean it's equivalent to like this so you can either write this or you write this both are same okay so that's the combination of uh, assignment as well as the arithmetic operation same we can do with the minus uh, multiplication division and everything okay so that's all about operator so javascript has uh, how you can display abilities how you can uh, display uh, the javascript things right so one we saw as a console log which helps us to display something when I say console log hello js it displays me hello js on console window so that's a one way of displaying something so what are the possible way a javascript can display something Okay, similar way when you saw console log warn, we have something called console dot log is right. We have something called console dot warn also there. So I can say console dot warn. So what this does is just gives you a different color. You can see I'm giving as a ex exclamatory symbol and the line is completely yellow. So 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 by this it says okay something warning has happened. So similar way I can say console dot error. You can see now this is coming in red color with cross red. So these are the few uh, ways you can differentiate what is your information, what is your warning, what is your error. Uh, so when we use console log, uh, it's useful because it's only display something on console, right? So when we actually run the application in production environment, you don't need this console logs or console warns or console error. So this is only useful during your development phase because you can get to know by this console of what's happening in your code, which flow is executing. Okay, you're not sure if you have some condition like if else blah blah some logic and you want to put some consoles so that you can understand by seeing your console log, okay, how your code flow is working. Uh, so if something goes wrong, uh, something is not working as you expected you can come back to console window to see some logs because if it's an error it will come as an error if it's a warning or so based on that you can debug what happened wrong so this is where the console is important okay so that's about console there is something called alert there is something called alert so this, what this alert does this just opens off a pop up on top of a browser when you might have seen sometime uh, when you open some browser it just keeps the pop-up saying uh, you're not connected to internet and uh, it's an example uh, generally uh, we got uh, some other issues on browser itself but you can have something like that it just keeps you an error saying okay it, it just keeps a pop-up saying okay uh, you should use Chrome you should use Internet Explorer to uh, have a better view of this application something like that so those kind of thing you can do using alert so alert is something when I click that so I'm not sure whether you guys are seeing alert or not I got alert saying hi I'm not sure whether that's in sharing uh, you guys are able to see alert or not so this is how uh, your alert works so this is also one way of uh, display possibilities Okay, so that is one thing called document dot write by <coughs> using which you can write something to your view. So we saw how we can alert something, how we can console log. Now we see how we can write something to view. So I can say document dot write. Hello JavaScript. And when I execute this, <coughs> excuse me, you can see I got a hello JavaScript over here, uh, just below hello plunker on my view. So this is a way, one of the way you can write something to your view. 
that's document dot write and you just pass some string. You can pass like this also. So I'm directly writing uh, the HTML way inside that, right? H2, you can see H2 starting and then inside that hello JavaScript is there and then <coughs> I'm closing the H2 tag. <coughs> So in this case, if I reload this guy, it's come a bit bold because that H2, that element H2 is part of HTML, it's take effect. That's why now I'm getting hello JavaScript in a bit bold color, but it's a smaller than hello plunker because hello plunker has been uh, used uh, H1. So it's H1 element. So if I want to write, introduce an H2 element, I can write like this H2. So this is how also you can uh, display your JavaScripting in your view, okay? So there is one more way how you can do it. That's called inner HTML. Okay, so there is one more way you can uh, write uh, the things and that is uh, by inner HTML. So the inner HTML I just show you a bit later. So this is also the inner HTML also helps uh, you to write something directly on a view. And that's the most used. So document dot write. Guys, are you able to hear me? Yes, no. Now it's okay. Okay, cool. So there are a few uh, primitive uh, data types in JavaScript. So those are mainly a string, number, boolean. Sravya is in or offline? Okay, good. <laughs> so, string number and boolean are uh, three major uh, primitive data types uh, which is there in JavaScript. And apart from that, also there are two uh, data types, uh, primitive data types. We call it null and undefined. We'll see that about all of this. So every expression in JavaScript, every expression in JavaScript returns a value. And those value will have type. And that's why uh, you guys are seeing those undefined when you're executing some command or some, sorry, some expression because every expression in JavaScript will return a value and that value will have type where explicitly you are not saying what type it will return it will return undefined that's how it works <coughs> so when I say 2 plus 2 it will return a value as 4 and it has type number 
So all the numeric things are number. And that is a command or a method, whatever you can say it, is called type of. So this type of helps us to determine what the type of uh, that value is, what the type of that value is. And so we'll see that. So we'll go back to our browser. We don't need Plunker also, everything can be available in console. So when I say var equal to two, and when I say type of A, it returns me number. So this is a type of A. Similar way when I say val B equal to hello, and when I say type of B, it's string. And the third is when I say var C equal to true, and when I say type of C, it's boolean. So these are the major three types in JavaScript, number, string, boolean. And you can see anything we define, we just have to use a keyword called var. So you can say var, if you have to say a number also, like in C or C++, how we say, right? There's a different thing like int, float, string, bool. Here, nothing is there. You just have to say var, then the variable name, equal to operator for assigning, and then the value. So that value could be a number, that value could be a string, that value could be a number. So this is how this works. If I just say var equal to d, I'm not assigning any value right away. And when I say type of d, it gives me undefined. So undefined also a primitive data type in JavaScript. So if you don't assign any value to a variable in JavaScript, by default JavaScript put a value there, that value is nothing but undefined. So that value itself name is undefined. And the type of that value is also undefined because when I print t, you can see it's returning me a value as undefined. And when I say type t, the type also undefined. Cool, it's, it's a bit confusing. So when you don't give any value to a variable, JavaScript automatically put a value there and that value is undefined and its type also is undefined. Cool. Okay, there is one more uh, primitive type is null. So I can directly assign a null to some variable. So actually null means nothing. So in that variable nothing is there. Okay. And when I try to access A, it says null. Means nothing is there. But when I say type of A, it returns object. <coughs> so this was actually a existing bug in JavaScript, but that bug is never going to be fixed. It will be there from so many years like this, and it will be there uh, in coming days also, because so many codes which has been written on JavaScript is dependent on that bug. So ideally the type of A uh, should say null because none also a primitive data type like undefined, but it says it's an object. So I just showed you so that you will not be confused when you see this in future. So there are two things in JavaScript, one is undefined, one is null. Uh, ideally or literally both are same, means nothing is there. That means nothing is there. So. So be it a null or undefined, that means that variable just hold not a legal value. You can understand that. So it doesn't have a legal value. <coughs> okay. And JavaScript has a dynamic types. And what does that mean? So same variable can be used as a different types. So I can say where a equal to two. So when I say type of a, now it's saying number. And suddenly on the same variable a, I can assign hello. It's, it's quite allowed in JavaScript. In other programming language, it's not allowed. In other programming language, it will say 
you cannot assign string to integer type variable. So that the other programming language will say, but in JavaScript, it's pretty much allowed. You can assign with any value without worrying about what type of value it was having. Now if I will do a type of A, it will give me string. So that's what, so JavaScript having a dynamic types. Same variable can be used as the, for holding different types of values. Okay. So what is a variable? A uh, variable allow to store a reference to a value which can be used later. That's what a variable means, right? So it just holds a reference to a value. It doesn't hold a value actually. When I say var a equal to 2, 2 will be get stored in some location in memory of JavaScript. A will be there in somewhere in JavaScript. And what A will contain? A will contain the reference to that value, which can be used later. <clears throat> so when we create a new variable, we call it declaration. Because when I say var A without assigning any value, that means it's just a declaration. And variable we create using var keyword, and variable name cannot start with a number. Okay, so I cannot start, I cannot have a variable number saying 1a. It gives me syntax error, you can see that. So variable name has to start with letter or, or there are two other things that are allowed. One is dollar, other is underscore. So only these two special characters are allowed while creating a JavaScript variable. All anything else is not allowed. If I use slash, it's giving me error. If I use dot, it's giving me error. So only there are two special characters that is dollar and underscore. Only these two are allowed in a variable name and it can be uh, at start also. Or it can be at the end also, it can be in between also. But numbers are also allowed in a uh, variable name, but a variable name cannot start with a number. I can have a variable number name saying A1, but I cannot have a variable name saying 1A. Okay, good. And no space allowed when you create a variable name. I cannot have a variable number name like var A or space B. It's not allowed. I can do like this, where a comma b. What this does, it will create a two variable. One is a, other is b. That's allowed. Okay, <coughs> and uh, okay, and uh, this variable names are case sensitive. If you use uh, so the small, if you create a variable. A equal to 5, you can create a variable capital A equal to 6, and both are different. You can see, when you type small a, it's return me 5. When you create capital A, it returns me 6. So it's a case sensitive. Okay, now what's the best practice to use a variable name? The best practice to create a variable name is use a camel case. So what does a camel case means? It will start with a small a letter and if there are two words in between that upper case will come up. Let's say I want to create, create a variable name saying R school. So it will be like R school. You see it starts with O small and then R and then uh, a new word gets started. Then there I use a uh, capital letter. We call it camel case, right? So the best practice to uh, have a variable name should be like this when you are using uh, meaningful name because whenever you create a variable it should have a meaningful name. You should not create a variable name, name saying var a, var b, var c although I was doing it uh, for a demonstration purpose but when you are using in actual code uh, you should have a meaningful variable name. You should not 
create a variable saying var a, var i, var j. Those are not a good practice because after a few days or if someone else see your code, by seeing that variable name, he cannot understand what that variable is going to hold. When I say var r school name, if I create a variable name saying var r school name, I'm pretty much sure by just reading the variable name, it will hold some value which will be our school. So that's uh, the best way of creating a variable. Okay. So it's the same thing I think I have mentioned here, whatever I was talking uh, about variables. And then we'll move to a JavaScript string. So what is a JavaScript string? <coughs> so JavaScript string is uh, simply stores a series of characters. Like I have shown you var a equal to hello. Hello is nothing but it's a series of character. H is a character, P is a character, L, L, O are also different characters. So string is nothing but a series of character. <coughs> so a string can be any text inside uh, quotes. It could be single quote, it could be double quote. So if we go back to our console, I can either say, so I'm giving a variable name as str, nothing but string. So I can, either write like this uh, using double quotes or I can write use a single quote. Both are allowed in JavaScript. You can either use double quote, you can either use single quote, both are allowed. There is one a property of string is there, that property name is length. So just a variable name, my variable name is str, I just will say str then dot you can see length, it gives me 10. So it gives the length of that string. So if you count JavaScript, it is having 10 characters. That's why it's giving me 10. So this is one uh, property which gives you the length of your string. So that like this, there are so many <coughs> uh, methods and properties are there of string. So when you just type your string name, just a string name, my string name is str and dot. You can see this console window is having a very good, beautiful feature, which gives me all those methods and properties which are available on string. It shows me here, you can see that. There is something called two uppercase. And that's a method, that's why I just used uh, these two parentheses. And it just make my string to uppercase. You can see that? Similar way I will be having two lowercase also. You can see two lowercase. It just converted back to lowercase. But interestingly, it didn't change anything to my original string. You can see my original string still is in camel case, uh, j caps, s caps, uh, but when you use this to uppercase, to lowercase, it just converts back that, you can store it. So I can create one more variable saying my str, and there I can use str dot to uppercase and now my str will oh my god so I have used forget to use those uh, function calls so whenever you use a function or a method you have to use this uh, brackets <coughs> okay and now when I read this my str will have caps version but my original will be there in str Okay, so like this, there are so many things are there. If if you want to print any special character inside string, what will be special character? 
let's say I want to print a string which itself will have a semicolons. How we can do that? Because semicolons which we uh, generally give at beginning and ending of the string. But yeah, I have to store some value which will have string only. Let's say I want to store something which will be having uh, like this. Okay. Uh, what I'll say. Uh, such in okay. Let's say I want to show something like this. It's you can see there is a semicolon that it's such in star. Let's say I want to have a string like this. How I'll do that? Because when I do like this, it's it detects this uh, columns as a start and end of a string. So how to uh, do that? So you can use the escape character. Uh, how you can do that? So I can store something like this, uh, where such equal to. I can use this quotes. Then I can say eight. Then I can use this escape character like this. It's such again escape character. Okay. Now if I print search, it's there. It's such in search. So if you want to print any special character, you can use escape character. We call is escape character. You just have to uh, put a uh, backward slash, uh, and after that you can use that special character. Okay, there is some question from Servia. Sorry, I missed that. What exactly native code means? Okay, so okay, you saw so you saw that maybe uh, when I assign that uh, this, right? Dot, uh, upper. Sorry. So I have not called it. Okay, as I may see, you saw some native code, right? <coughs> okay, so this native code is nothing but this. That's a browser code. So it's it's not displaying that logic to you how it does that. It just show you native code. So that means there are some code is there which a browser has written to convert your uh, lowercase to uppercase. So that's browser's native code. Okay, clear. No. It's okay. <coughs> Okay, like this, there are a lot of built-in JavaScript methods are present to work with string. There are so many things you can do with string. Okay, then how I can get to know what all methods are there to play around with string? Write string and the end. So and I prefer it always uh, because uh, I like the documentation and it's up to always updated. And you can see uh, my left side, these many methods are there, there to play around with your string. So what those method does, like we saw the uppercase, lowercase, a similar way you can concatenate two string. Uh, you can find out a particular character in entire string. Uh, so, and you can find out whether that character is available in that string or not. Let's say we are having something called str, right? We have in JavaScript, so I can say string dot index of yeah, and index of I'll just use t whether t is there or not. Yes, t is there, and it gives me the position of that t. The position of the t is nine. Okay, so you must be confusing when I say string dot length, it says ten, and t is at the end, but it's saying position of t is nine. Why? because it starts from 0. So my J is 0th location, my T is 9th location. That's why the 10 character is there. 
So when I say J, oh, it's a minus one. It's saying J is not there, but you but you must be wondering J is there in JavaScript. It's the first letter, but that's a capital J. And I'm looking for small j. So it's a case sensitive. So now it gives me zero. Means the J is there and it's in zero location. So when you search for any character which is not there inside that string, it returns to minus one. By that I can get to know whether that character is there inside that string or not. If it returns minus one, it's not there. Okay, cool. So like this, there are so many things you can do in JavaScript. And you can go through this documentation. Uh, to do that, open a Google, just search, just write string MDM, nothing else. It will give you this page. You can slice it. Uh, then slice means if a bigger string is there, uh, you aren't uh, some portion of that. You can take it, take that out. So many things. You can replace few things if you want to replace. Replace is there. If you want to search some character, you can search it. If you want to slice it, you can slice it. You can split if multiple words are there. If you want to split it, you can split it. There are so many uh, things uh, you can do it uh, in string operations. So I'm not going to cover each and every method. What about it's a twice in a word Java? Okay, so that's a good question. So str is having a twice. So when I say A, it gives returns me the first occurrence of that A. So the first occurrence of that A is at the first position, that zero position in the first place, so it returns me one. So that's how the index of works. But if you want to know whether multiple A's are there or not, okay, there are other methods are there to achieve that. So you can look over here, which method will suit you to find out the multiple of A's are on it, or there is a regex regular expression that's altogether a different topic altogether uh, by which uh, you can find out uh, if multiple A's are there with JavaScript I mean the particular string or not. So that's also possible. There is something called trim left, trim right is there. So if I say str dot trim left. Didn't do anything. I don't know how to do it. Basically. What this string left does. I don't know, so I have to see uh, what this string left does. Okay, new string repeating the call string stripped of white spaces from its left hand. Okay, so basically we are not having any white spaces. That's why. It's, so if you are having any white spaces in your string. Then it can trim that. So let's say if I write a variable and I'll just uh, write some JS and then give some space, uh, then I'll just say now a dot trim right. Cool. Excuse me, error. Here I am trim right, which is right. Okay, trim left. Oh, oh, I got it. I was using var keyword. That's why it was giving me uh, issues. So I think so. Shape trim right. Cool. Now you can see uh, that. Actually, it returns with a trim one, but original one it doesn't change. So original one remains that you know we can store it in some other variable and can use it. So it trims all the white spaces from that. Thing. So like this, there are so many things out there uh, which is uh, doable in uh, using string. So you can go through this documentation, understand what these things are doing. If you still have questions on those, you can come back to me. Uh, I can explain you why it's working like that. Okay, then uh, we'll come to numbers and uh, <clears throat> so JavaScript uh, 
uh, numbers can be written with or without decimals so I can have Java var a equal to 2 or I can have var 2 a equal to 2 dot 2 so JavaScript numbers can be in uh, with or without decimal but for for that we don't have to do anything special and both are type number only so 2 is also type number 2 dot 2 is also type number there is nothing called integer and float concept in JavaScript so it extra large numbers or extra small numbers can be written with scientific notation like right how we use so I can write a variable a equal to 3 p 3 right so that means nothing but 3000 so you can write a number like this also using exponential scientific way exponent scientific notation so unlike other programming language which I was talking uh, JavaScript doesn't define numbers like integer, short, long integer, floating point blah 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 for everything uh, JavaScript for JavaScript it's a number only so if I just say number equal to 2.2 .2, if I say type of number it's just a number Uh, anyone is disconnected because I heard few beeps of joining and disconnecting. Uh, Dilip Sarvia, are you guys there? Dilip Sarvia, are you guys there? We are fine, audio is not good. So it's only not good now, or it's not good throughout the session, then I can work it on. Okay, so I'll continue, or it's too much for today, uh, whatever guys you will see. Okay, so you also got the same, the voice breaks. You can't hear me? Uh, are you able to hear me now? Yes, okay, cool. Okay, cool. So, are we okay to continue or it's enough for the day because I have to cover number and pool. That's my original plan. Are you guys comfortable if I continue for 10 more minutes? Yes, continue. Okay, cool. Okay, so I was talking about the numbers. So for JavaScript, everything is number only. There is nothing called integer, float, blah, blah, blah. Short integer, long integer. Is there another programming language? And in JavaScript, there is uh, some value called infinity also. That's interesting. So in JavaScript, you are we are having a value called infinity only so I can have num equal to infinity and when I say type of num it's a number only it says so there is a value in number uh, in JavaScript called infinity so a value which JavaScript cannot represent a very large number which exceeds is a machine a range of this uh, displaying or managing then it considered it as an infinity. So in JavaScript there is a value called infinity exists and there is a value called minus infinity also there. That's funny, right? So I can have num1 equal to minus infinity. 
ini props infinity asli okay so i has to be capital so i can have a value called infinity i can have a value called minus infinity both are possible in javascript okay so there is one more interesting value of a number is that that's called nan n a n i can have a value called nan so in javascript something called nan what does this nan means nan means not a number not a number so what does this mean not a number anything which javascript cannot represent in a number or in a numeric way it called it as a nan so what are the example of those if i multiply 3 into hello javascript considered it as a nan rather than throwing error so if i say that e equal to 3 cross hello hello as a string and when i read a it say me nan voice is not clear getting many breaks Shabhi, it's same for you as well. You are also getting many breaks in between, or it's only for the lid. Shabhi, are you there? Okay, thank you guys for joining. Uh, if you are facing problem today, um, so we'll continue the same from here to tomorrow. The JavaScript numbers uh, will continue tomorrow. Uh, is that okay? Cool. So bye for the day. Uh, see you guys on my next session.